everyone, Maurice Singh here. Welcome to Tanks Invest, where we're going to be talking about investing, finance, and professional development. For today's videos, for entertainment purposes only, the stock that we talk about today would be Tesla, TSLA. So I'm going to go through our technical analysis on looking at some of the collective updates that we've been seeing so far, both on the macroeconomical perspective and the microeconomical perspective and the technical charts. Also, I'm going to go through our price level that we should watch out for if you're interested in getting in. And lastly, my price target uh, for the year end 2021 for the stock price as well. So stay tuned, stick around, and let's make some money. <music> All right, so moving to the technical analysis, looking at Tesla as of today, uh, May 6th, uh, 2021, you can see that ever since in the morning, we sold off completely from the top right here at the 680 level when we opened. And then ever since then, after 930, we basically dropped all the way with a lot of people selling and uh, there's some institutional selling as well because of the volume level that you saw in the beginning. And we, you know, consolidated a little bit and then subsequently dumped again because of a lot of the both a combination of uh you know i would say 80 percent retail investors and then 20 percent fund managers that also dumped and then as we got to the 11 o'clock which is the the time when most people on the west coast start to wake up uh it rallied back up again and there was a time that it was a strong resistance level that we formed you know in previous level the 650 which is a good psychological level that people watch for and subsequently bounced back up and then we consolidated slowly slowly from there but across the day it was more of a downward uh, trend as you could see from the rsi we've been just kind of hovering you know in between the lines but more of a downward trend and then you know, and you could see that the MACD throughout the day has been just uh, crossing. So a lot of the uh, spiral movement that's going on right now, uh, def but definitely, you know, leaning more towards a downside. But towards the end of the day, you could see that people start to pick it back up and you could see that we slowly uh, spiral upward uh, and we close at um, about a point. A, neg a negative one percent downturn today but after market hour we're starting to see some uh, green up by so point uh two percent so far uh and just looking at that so that's the one one minute chart look at the five minute chart relative comparable you could see you know same uh same sporadic move so far more of a downward shift um, very logical we're basically just consolidating right now but more on the downturn perspective so look at the one out uh, at the daily chart, which is a more uh, tells you the better story based on my opinion. Uh, you can see that ever since from last year, we rally all the way back up, you know, from the Q3, Q4, from the bottom with like 379 at one point uh, before the split. And then after the split, uh, we rally basically all the way up to the $900 level. And then ever since then, Q1, Q2, we basically sold off significantly because of the tech sector rotations, because of the tax uh, season because of you know just how much we have gained so far from last year and also with respect to the chip shortage that we're experiencing right and also as we heard recently from jerome powell with some of the shaky uh, economical outlook with respect to the monetary policies and also the you know a, a quadruple whammy with respect to biden uh his uh, proposal with the tax adjustment uh, for capital gains tax and also for the corporate tax adjustments going forward, which was subsequently hindered the profit margin for a lot of corporations and us uh, equity investors as well, which subsequently drove a sell off across the board. And ever since then, we can see that we've been uh, basically just sold off and we bounced back, you know, with this one time Black Swan event of the 539.49 when uh, there was the speech around the. Uh, from the Federal Reserve uh, that scare people uh, uh, ahead of the 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 conversation that Jerome uh, that Jerome gave to the to the public and subsequently th to that we bounced with a v-shaped recovery but subsequent to that we you know it was more like a dead cat bounce type of dynamics uh, and we bounced back down because of the you know you know bearish settlement with respect to the new administrations but also with respect to the outlooks for the chip shortage. And then we rally back up uh, because of the CPI report that came out in mid-April and that was a pretty good outcome so it bounced back up so it builds some momentum and it slowly consolidated and pound, pumped back up again because of the some of the uh, good delivery outcome that uh, Elon was proposing um, and, and also projecting to the public uh, ahead of the earnings call which 
you know gave that pump but you know days before the earnings call we saw some uh, some sort of a ne negative media affectation with respect to the crash that's you know unfortunately killed two people with the autonomous drive um, in Austin Texas um, and also with the uh, auto show and also with you know some of the negative media affectation with respect to the chip shortage that subsequently drove the sell-off so as we saw from the earnings even though it was a rock solid earnings it was definitely you know uh, beats on all levels uh, it's still you know investors were you know kind of sell the news type of momentum and subsequently drove this sell off uh, ever since. And you can see that right now, you know, we're forming this wedge, which you could see I drew this like golden triangle right here. You see that the wedge is slowly forming in a more of a more tighter, uh, you know, uh, level. And we will foresee some sorts of a squeeze later in May 25th or basically end of May some sometimes so or in a couple of weeks from now that we should see some sort of a, a, a pump, um, a pretty seismic move. Uh, it could either from a more of an upward trend or a downward trend. And based on what I see so far, I believe this is going to be an upward push because of just look at the RSI, we've been pretty much oversold. And looking at the MACD, we were, you know, pretty high before, but we are, you know, at the bottom right now and we slowly fusing together to form some sort of a cross. Um, so right now, I think, we are closing on the wedge and the wedge is becoming tighter and tighter forming this uh, massive triangle my massive wedge here which will subsequently propel a push upward going forward so i wouldn't be surprised if we see some sort of a, a new high level uh, in recent times to go back to somewhere around like the 775 sometime or even 800 sometimes in end of may or earlier in mid-june you know, depending on how we consolidate going forward and depending on how the administration with respect to tax uh, adjustments and some of the economic economic outlooks with respect to the um, uh, the the chip shortage uh, progressions that we've been going to be seeing uh, but we should see some sort of a positive catalyst knowing the fact that we've been so down and so depressing so far and it's been just pressing down and as we as the economy coming back up you know uh, hedge fund managers are going to start chipping away from the recovery play and start pumping dollars into the growth stocks and the high growth and you know more of the riskier stocks if you may like tesla or like more uh, you know newer technologies type of investments play uh that we should see across the board for more small small cap and growth stocks to pump up in uh in early q Q3 or late Q2 uh, sometimes this year. So definitely a, a, a level to watch out for. But the wedge is forming and it's been following the trend line pretty accordingly uh, based on what we see so far. So I foresee some massive mood coming. Now look at tip ranks. You can see that for Tesla right now we have 24 analyst ratings with 11 buys, 6 holds and 7 sales. Um, and across the board right now, uh, their average rating right now is about $645 which is uh you know we are sl you know, slightly below that right now you know with you know the two with more of a negative 2.65 percent but on average wise uh that's a pretty optimal level but i do for cs2 possibly going down a little bit more because of some of the just negative affectations across the board that we just talked about um but right now i think if you Think about this long term uh, with the growth that has been adopting with the expansion that the company is doing and with respect to the productions numbers that the company has been generating uh, on a macro perspective. This company is definitely going to be one of the greatest companies uh, in, in the future. Um, so if you think about this in a long term perspective, buying it right now, I wouldn't be too shaky about it. I will actually feel pretty comfortable uh, holding my dollars in there for the next two to three years. Uh, so high would be a thousand two hundred dollars level in the next twelve months. Down would be sixty seven dollars level, which is just crazy. That's that requires the company to go bankrupt or do something extremely drastic. You know, uh, I think this is probably Gordon Johnson's uh, prediction, which doesn't quite make any sense if you look at his rating and just he he doesn't really have any um, you know sound. Uh, recommendation or any logical explanations behind his uh, uh, so-called evidentiary support for his thesis. So, uh, I mean, 
you gotta respect the man. You know, he is what he is. He's putting his name out there, so he has to stand for what he believes for the past year. So for him to turn back and change his thesis right now, it'll, you know, he would just look like uh, you know what, right? So, um, so but so far right now, I think six hundred uh or anything below seven hundred is a great price point to get in. Let's just spend some time on taking a look at Kathy's holding in Ark Invest. You can see that for for Tesla. Uh, you can see that you know across the board she's been uh, kind of selling on a daily basis but if you look closely together the amount that she's selling is not really uh, a significant amount she's selling is because of her weight allocation it's been kind of inflated you know recently you could see that she's trying to basically maintain her weight across the board around like 10 percent and you could see that as it goes down um, you know, she buys as she goes up, she sells, right? So she's basically balancing her portfolio to it's more of like a fiduciary duty for her investors, for her limited partners, her LPs, you know, to not overweight certain part of her portfolio with just one stock, right? That's just called being a responsible investor. So no don't take this like a, as a negative affectation or anything that's negative with respect to the business as a whole or like anything she fundamentally changed her perspective or her thesis about the stock it's just that she has to you know diversify you know, to de-risk uh as the responsible investor right you could see that across the board right try to maintain in the rq fund 11.15 percent across the board right it's just kind of inflated right now so she's gonna have to continue to sell a little bit more to sustain the level about like the 10 percent or like that low 11 percent right so she's just being responsible and, uh, and you can see that in arc w fund as well she's selling because like she's been uh, like kind of bloated right so she's trying to diversify and slowly minimize the risk of being too outliered in one stock versus another so don't like take this like a as a negative uh affectation across the board all right, so moving on to just a recap right here just to consolidate everything we talked about with respect to quantitative analysis and some of the macroeconomical trends and macro microeconomical trends. Uh, I think 660 or 650 around that level is definitely a very good price point for us to get into to Tesla. Um, I think if you buy in today, I wouldn't be you know blinking in an eye. I think it would be a very good price point, knowing the fact that the wedge is forming and we've been consolidated ever since. That uh, and also if you think about this long term, two x, three x from here, or even potentially four x from here in the next two to three years will be highly likely, right? The next resistance level, which is more of a psychological level, will be the six fifty. So if you get in at this level, this is even more attractive. And if we ever get this black swan events that happen later in early March, uh, I think 595 can be possible, depending on how the CPI report coming, depending on how Biden and how Jerome is going to freak us out. <laughs> uh, so that's a, definitely another great price point for us to get in. My year-end price target, you know, I foresee it's going to be having, having some sort of a rotation coming in Q3, early Q3 and late Q2. Um, and this will subsequently provide us another rally uh, all the way to the Santa Claus rally in December, uh, Christmas time, that uh, $950 or close to even a thousand or even a thousand or even above a thousand. Highly likely, you know, in, in one year out. Uh, and if you buy it now, this will subsequently give you a 43% of upside from here or 1.4 times your money from here. All right, so thank you so much for joining me today uh, to go through the Tesla technical analysis. Again, please hit the like button, that subscribe button, and also that bell notification. Uh, and appreciate you guys uh, dropping by, and please stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.